Welcome back everybody this Friday afternoon. So in this video for section 6.4, I would like to continue our discussion solving equations, but now what we will do is we will use um, some of our identities to help us solve the equations. In the previous videos, we didn't really need the identities. All we needed was were inverses, but in these next two examples, you will see how identities will play a factor. So same or similar directions, let's find solutions to the equation sine of 2x minus sine of x equals 0. But in this case, let's not find all of them. Rather, let's only find them if you went around the unit circle once. You'll notice these calculations are inherently a little bit harder. So I think the real important factor here is that you can find the original two angles, and then from there, if you wanted, you could add the revolutions to find all solutions. But for now, let's go ahead and focus on one revolution around the unit circle. So the first thing that I am noticing with this example is that right from the beginning, these are not like terms because they don't have identical inputs. Here is a double angle. This one has a single angle. So my goal, or one of my ideas, is to try to make it so that they both have single angle inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this double angle into 2 sine of x cosine of x and then go ahead and continue with the rest. So what you might have noticed here is that to get from this step to this step, I used the double angle formula exactly as it reads on your cheat sheet for the sine of 2x. Now notice they all have single angle inputs, just single x's. So that's really helpful. Now when trying to solve equations, if you have terms that share things, then often we would like to factor those out. So I am going to factor the sine of x out of each term. So if I pull a sine of x out, this is where students have a little bit of trouble. Think of this as division. So remember here what I'm doing is I'm factoring. So here's the idea. Look at this first term, and if you were to divide that first term by sine of x, the sines would cancel, and all you'd have left is 2 cosine of x. Now, don't forget about this other term. You have a subtraction symbol, and then think about it again as division. If you divide sine of x by sine of x, you're left with 1. So you have two terms inside of here. That should happen when factoring. You should have the same number of terms in your set of parentheses as you did in the previous step. Of course, you could always double check quickly by redistributing 2 sine of x cosine of x minus sine of x. So our factoring looks fine. Now, in algebra, maybe I'll put this in brackets to clarify. In algebra, you have a property known as the zero property. And what it states is that if you have two things being multiplied together that equals zero, you break them apart and set them both equal to zero. So now I will create two equations, one from this first bracket, sine of x equals zero, one from the second bracket, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So maybe here I'll put a little reminder that we used the 0 property. If you don't remember the 0 property well, go back in your ebook or in your textbook and look in the index and go find it. And I believe it's back in chapter 2. You'll see the 0 property and it will all come back to you. Okay, so now I have these two equations that I'm trying to solve. Let's start with this one here because it's a little bit easier. The trig function is already isolated, so I can take the inverse right now. 
sine inverse of zero. Recall from our little picture, the y coordinate equals zero at zero and pi. So remember, I truncated. I'm not going to do all solutions. I only care about going around the circle once. So the two solutions I pick up from this one are angle 0 and angle pi. Now let's go ahead and solve the other one. First, isolate the trig function. So there's the arithmetic to isolate the cosine. Then take inverses of both sides. Then go find where the x coordinate is 1 half. That happens twice. It happens at pi over 3. And it happens again at 5 pi over 3. Remember, when solving equations, I get to keep both points, and I don't have to worry about negative coterminals. So we can write down those two angles directly as pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So notice for this example, we ended up with four solutions. In fact, if you'd like, maybe you could write them in order, 0, pi over 3, so 0, pi over 3, pi, and then finally 5 pi over 3. So I wrote them in order of increasing value. <clears throat> so I would like to do one more example similar to this in this video where we will need to perhaps use an identity or perhaps some factoring. So for this next example, let's solve the equation. One forty four sine of theta cosine of theta equals thirty six, and this one was very specific. It said that theta is between 0 and 90 degrees. Or stated another way, 0 and 90 degrees will put us up in quadrant 1. So this one's unlike a lot of what we've seen. You'll notice here that I have a product, sine and cosine. So there isn't a fast and easy way to isolate either of these trig functions. Rather, right from the beginning, I need to use an identity. So here's my thought process. I am going to look through my identities list and find one where I have a number and then sine and then cosine. And after you look for a while, you will see that in there you have an identity that says 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. In fact, this is the exact same identity that we had to use in the previous example. This is a double angle identity. So what I'm really noticing is the pattern number, sine, cosine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this double angle formula and force this left hand side to look like this double angle. So the right hand side we will leave untouched. And in order for me to use this, I would need to multiply my double angle by something to get all the way up to 144. Or stated another way, divide 144 by 2 to give you 72. So let's just verify everything that I've done here. This one's a little bit tricky. I recognized the pattern of the double angle. I wrote down the double angle exactly as it is, and then I asked myself, what do I need to multiply by to get the original value? Then the right-hand side remained untouched. Okay, so now that I have this inside of here, I followed that pattern, we can transform this into a single trig equation, sine of 2 theta. 
So here, again, is just that application of the double angle. I recognized the pattern first, then I actually transformed this and collapsed it into a single trig function. You won't be able to solve it if it's a product. It has to collapse into a single. Now, isolate this trig function by dividing both sides by 72. 36 divided by 72 is 1 half. We know how to solve from here. Take inverses of both sides. So looking over here, I potentially have two solutions at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But notice, uh, let's do this in degrees. So it would be 30 degrees and then 150 degrees. But notice, I'm going to throw out the 150 degrees. So you might ask why I'm doing that. Remember, my restriction was that the angle will be up in quadrant one. So we'll throw this one out and keep this one. So that tells me that two theta, remember that two is still out in front, is equal to 30 degrees. Or finally, dividing both sides by 2, theta is equal to 15 degrees. Notice when I wrote down my solutions, I was very careful to write things in terms of degrees because of the original restriction and use the degree symbol. So here's your solution. Now, you could check this. So in order to check this, go up to the original equation. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and plug 15 degrees in for theta. And when you're done with, with approximation, you should get approximately 36 and you will. So in these two videos, mostly we had to look at identities. Specifically, we used the double angle identity. You may have to use other types of identities. But the idea for this one is to recognize the pattern and collapse it into a single trig function, just the sine function. Even though it was double angled, we dealt with that down here in the division. So in our next video, I will teach you how the quadratic formula can be used for some of these solutions.